Hello, this video is going to describe how to animate um, simulations in 20SIM. And today we'll just do a simple system, a single pendulum. So this pendulum is pinned at point A, uh, it's a center of gravity at point G, an angle theta measured positive counterclockwise with respect to the horizontal, and uh, a total length of one meter with point G in the middle. All right, so I've already built up a 20 sim model of the pendulum, and inside the pendulum submodel here, I have placed one junctions for the velocity of point G in both the x and the y directions. Now those velocity components are expressed in a fixed or inertial reference frame. Uh, there's a mass attached to each one junction. There's a one junction for angular velocity. If I integrate that, I get the angle theta. I have a rotary inertia J, some uh, viscous damping. And I define the hinge point A, velocity of A in the x direction, is velocity of G in the x direction, plus distance AG times the sine of theta times theta dot. And similarly, VA in the y direction is velocity of G in the y direction minus AG cos theta theta dot. All right, so I'll presume that the, uh, the viewer can uh, get a bond graph to that point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a line animation to show how this pendulum behaves. I'll open the 20 sim simulator window. Here I'm plotting x versus y of the center of gravity. And in my parameters window I've assigned a mass of 30 kilograms, rotary inertia of 22.5, etc. And I've said that the distance from A to G is 0.5 meters, or half the length. I'm going to give the uh, point G an initial x-coordinate of 0.5, y-coordinate of 0, and an initial angle theta of 0. So it's going to start horizontally from rest, because I've made the uh, momenta, the initial states of the inertia, is equal to 0. If I go back to my sketch, Okay, so angle theta will start out at 0. Point G will have an initial coordinate of 0 0.5 x and 0 in the y direction. All right, so when I run that simulation, point G, G traces out a circular arc. This would be, it would appear circular if the x and y scales were the same. Now I want to animate this. So I'm going to go into View, New 3D Animation Window. So here I see a 3D animation window, and I see an XYZ frame. This is the inertial frame, and uh, I'm going to animate my pendulum in the XY frame. So I'm going to click on 3D animation here, and I can see some of the things I can adjust. I can expand under reference frame, default lights and camera, and I can have my camera looking at the origin from various XYZ locations. Or I can just select a front camera that looks directly at the XY frame. And I can zoom wide or narrow with that slide control. So right now, I need to zoom in on this. So in order to zoom in, I have the option of using uh, the control key. I can hold down the control key. And I can... Uh, click to pan in or out. And because I have my PC in tablet mode now, that's uh, that's not working. So I'm going to uh, go back to XY camera and I'm going to zoom in. Let's see how that works. Okay, so now clearly I'm looking at the XY frame. I think I'll zoom in a little closer there. Okay. But again, uh, if you've got a keyboard in front of you, um, control click and your mouse will allow you to uh, either pan or zoom and uh, shift click and the arrow keys will let you do the other one. So control click mouse and shift click mouse will let you pan and zoom uh, with your mouse or your, uh, your touchpad. Okay, what I want to do now is in this reference frame, 
I'm going to right click on reference frame and now I can insert I can insert either bodies or lines. I'm going to insert a line and uh, I'm going to define the starting and ending position of that line. Because uh, the pendulum is assumed to be ideally pinned at point A, and I'll make point A the origin, I will say that this line is going to start with an X position of 0 and the Y position of 0. Actually, sorry, the values there should be 0, 0, and 0. I can have the start position either as a constant value or I can have it as a variable. Now I want to start the line at 0, 0, 0. The end position, now in my 20 sim model, I'm going to choose the variable option here. When I click choose variable and I go into my pendulum submodel, I have an integrator block which takes velocity of g in the x direction and integrates it. I'm going to take the output of that integration. That'll be the position of g x coordinate. I will choose a variable for the y position, which is the output of my integration of velocity of g in the y direction. And the z position, well, I can just make that value equal to zero. It's a two-dimensional uh, simulation we're doing here. Okay, well, other things I can do, I can go in and I can edit the color. I just clicked on choose static color. It defaults to white, which is hard to see against the white background of the dialog box. I'll choose blue. And I can choose various textures, materials, something which applies a bit more to uh, rigid bodies than lines. Okay. Now, I have a line in here under reference frame. So I don't need to define the orientation of the line. It's just going to draw the line from point A to point G. And the angle theta will be whatever it ends up being. So I'll click OK here. Here I can see my little line. Now I'll run the simulation again. Okay, it's a very fast simulation because it's a very simple model. Down here on the bottom I have a, a play set of play controls which are green. And I can play back at real time, one eighth, one quarter, a half. I'll choose a half real time and I'll hit play. And now we can see the pendulum starting at a horizontal position, swinging around not quite too horizontal in the other direction because I have some damping in there. And eventually it'll uh, it'll settle out to an equilibrium position that's just hanging straight down. Now if I had a double pendulum, I could just draw another line from the beginning of the second link to the end of the second link. So any uh, simple mechanisms, slider, cranks, four bars, etc., are fairly easily animated using this uh, line animation. So in the next video I will talk about bringing in a rigid body instead of the line. And in that case we'll have to define the orientation matrix uh, as well. Okay, so hopefully that'll be of use to you, and thanks for watching.